Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force with some more Hearthstone. We are continuing to climb the most recent beta test ladder. And uh, right now sitting at rank 19, I'm currently playing Exila's Rogue deck. Uh, it was used during the Gosu Cup number one. I'm playing against a Hunter here. I'm actually gonna drop the Thalnos. I will hold on to the Deadly Poison and I'm also gonna hold on to the Defender of Argus, uh, assuming that he's running some sort of a, a face roll or beat down rather. Of course, we get the Blood Mage down us back. Not the most terrible thing, because we do have a lot of spell damage, but I was hoping for a, a decent one or two drop one or two drop creature. This deck has quite a few of them. One drop in the uh, Art and Squire, and a handful of two drops, including Defias, Ringleader, Fairy Dragon, Loot, um, Fairy Dragon, and Loot Hoarder. A huge coin into this. Okay, so he is clearly just all about the Zerg down right now, trying to push damage to my face as quickly as possible and get me down to no health. Uh, the Defender of Argus should help in staving off some of that damage and pushing us closer to the mid game, which is where this particular deck really shines. So let's take a look here. What do we want to do? We could uncombo Perdition's Blade. And then if we don't attack, we can throw a Deadly Poison on it next turn. So why don't we try that? We're gonna do this, I'm not gonna attack, and then we can throw Deadly Poison on it, and that's gonna give us a couple of turns uh, with four damage, and potentially allow us to push four. Uh, the other reason I held on to it for an extra turn, rather than just doing the two damage now and going for that later. Look at that. So now we can push through that four, uh, that four health uh, blocker, and then we'll still have an extra attack left in it as well. Okay, so we're gonna throw this down. It's gonna allow us to push through that, take one damage to the yeah. face, but save our minion. And then with our remaining three, I think we're actually gonna go, going to go ahead and drop down a Fairy Dragon. And then we will pa pass the turn on over. Okay, so now we are even in health. Uh, I do have a little bit of board presence. Uh, obviously, an Explosive Trap at any given time could just completely wipe my board clean. He drops down an Iron Fur Grizzly that will be attacked into. He also drops down a Wind Fury to Dragon Hawk. Okay. Let's see here. Which best way to do this? Uh, do, 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 do. I think we'll just go ahead and go with this. Alright. I will attack into that. We're gonna hold on to our minion, but I still want to get rid of his Wind Fury in case he's got any means of pumping that up, which the deck obviously could potentially have. That is a beast, so. Plenty of beast cards, it'll pump up other beast cards. So leaving that thing in play, especially with Wind Fury, would not be a good idea. And now we've got some big old taunts in play. We are above the explosive uh, trap range, which is two damage across the board. Obviously the Loot Hoarder would still die, but these two guys would live. And he's gonna throw that into my Loot Hoarder, potentially. Well, he hits me for two in the face with the shot. Throws it into that because he's got an explosive trap. All right. Well, there's really nothing I can do about it. So we're just going to lose our creature. And unless I tried to wait until I drew into another Defender of Argus to pump him up a little bit, but that's really, you know, what are the, <laughs> what are the chances, right? What are the odds? All right, so let's go ahead and attack with that. There's the explosive shot, pretty much as expected. We'll get the card draw for the loot order. We do unfortunately end up losing our fairy dragon. Into the and don't want to play this because the charge is best used sort of as like, you know, like as a surprise attack. So we are going to throw all these guys in play, banking on the fact that he probably doesn't have a second explosive trap right now. Maybe he has a misdirection, but the odds of him having a second explosive trap aren't great. He's still got 20 cards remaining in his deck, so we're still here just, at, just in the mid game. So I expect him not to, and that means we could pretend- Oh, here's a explosive shot. It's gonna do two damage to both of those. We will get our card back. We also get a card draw. And there ends up an SI7 agent. And he's been too focused on board control. I mean, not that he shouldn't be, but he's been so focused on board control that he, um, he isn't doing a lot of damage to us, so. I'm okay with that. Ha, this guy's toast. And we are just going to go ahead and weapon up. And now bring him down to 13 health. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage in play. Plus the 4 from the Argent Commander will be 12. And then we will just need one more damage for the victory. 
could draw into an eviscerate, which would obviously do it, and then some. Here's a scavenging hyena. He, hyena. Here's a unleash the hounds. No animal companion. Pumping up the scavenging hyena. Scavenging hyena. <laughs> first hyena. First hyena, and then <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so he threw down all those creatures and did nothing with them, and they are just going to die now. That was not optimal use of any of that. Um, all right, so we go like this. We go like this. And then for the four, I guess I can throw the Argent Commander at it. I don't really want to. I almost want to just take that damage to the face. It's only two damage, and then I can throw one at... Yeah. See, I don't want to drop his shield, and I know that's sort of a waste of a uh, poison because we're getting rid of it. But I wanted to keep his shield on in case explosive trap ha happens, basically. In, in case he gets an explosive trap, I didn't want this shield to be gone. And I couldn't have weaponed up and, and then still played the Argent Commander that turn. Uh, because there was not enough mana to do all that, so... And then also do the other thing that I did. So, there's a kill shot. Steady shot, kill shot. There's a steady shot, and then we have the victory. Well, so, fun. game in the bag. Let's, uh, let's move on to another. Our second game here will be against a mage. Let me think here. Playing against a mage. I don't expect a ton of minions in play, which is pretty much what Blade Fury is used for. I want the Perdition's Blade in case we see a Mana Worm. And I don't think the Shiv is a bad idea. The Fice Ringleader really isn't the greatest in this matchup. Uh, you know what? We do have the coin, though. So I'm going to hold on to the Defias just to coin it into play. If he doesn't drop a Mana Worm on turn 1, that's going to be my play. We'll make him use his second turn to kill off our 2-1, and then we can hit him for 2 and sort of take it from there. Okay, so he does not end up playing... A mana worm. That, I mean, that's really like, that's just the worst opening for me to deal with. Uh, is an opponent playing a mana worm? Uh, if, obviously, a mage opening up with a mana worm. So, and this is likely to use his turn two to uh, hit my bandit. Or no, he opts for the engineer. That uh, that is that is really unfortunate. That is quite obviously just a side effect of the ranking that we're playing in, because that was not the right play. Um, I want to save Shiv potentially for later in the game. I can also potentially get spell power for it because I do run Blood Mage Thalnos. So instead of Shiving his minion, I'm just going to weapon up and take the uh, one to the face and then hit him for four. Uh, he most definitely should have, unless he's got a follow-up plan for this turn or next turn, but his most, I would say his best play his second turn would have been to do this bandit. All right, so he's going to mirror image. He's going to delay us a little bit further, but... That's, again, not really much of a problem because we can just take care of that. And then what is he? Is he throwing a frostbolt at my face? What is he doing? Are you serious? That's not what you should, you should have frostbolted a creature. Well, that's just, you know, this just, <laughs> this is just part of the ladder climb. Um, you just deal with, I guess, let me just call it what it is, suboptimal plays. All right. Let's see here. Play this guy. We could see some mass damage next turn. I would still get the card draw off of it, though. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and play that. Because I can still get the card draw off of it. We'll have to see what he does this turn with his four mana. I wonder if he's running Arcane Explosions. Uh, you don't really see that much in the current meta, but it's not impossible. And he's just gonna throw down a secret. Could be Vaporize. Guess we'll just find out right now what it is. Attack with this. The triggers, is it the armor? It is the ice barrier, there it is. All right. And now, we can, I really like this play. My shield. I'm gonna throw that in play. We're gonna give three and two health to those minions. We're also gonna hit him in the face for an additional six on top of the two plus the one from the weapon attack. So it's a nine damage turn there. We've got the cold blood in hand for a burst 
bit of damage, as well as the Perdition's Blade and the SI-7 Agent for two potential damage apiece. Uh, uh, four plus this weapon attack. If we get the combo, so we can go... Let's see here. All right, so he's going to throw down another mirror image. So we're not going to get our big crazy bursty turn right now, but... The Doomsayer, that needs to die. That will die. Where's that Ice Lance going? That Ice Lance is going to the 3-2. Okay. So we have four, five, six, seven just from that. We can also go, let's see, we've got five mana, so we can shiv, that's one, two, three, four, five. Or we can just get it off of this, which I guess is what we will do. I'm gonna combo that, that'll be seven total. Okay, so we're just going to attack into these guys. All right. And then we have the, we need to combo this, so I need to get something out before it. So let's do the, one to him, let's draw a card. Okay, we got a fairy dragon, all right. Uh, this is gonna be now four because it's comboed, which turns that into a seven attack. And then with our remaining two, do I want two fairy dragon? He can't, well, he could blizzard next turn. Maybe I shouldn't do it so I don't overextend. Eh, forget it, let's just play it. Let's just play it. See if he blizzards. I mean, if he has a blizzard, he would have played it last turn, right? So, double accolade of pain does him no good, and that is the game. Well, is it quite the game? If it's not quite the game, it's pretty close. So, it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 plus... Um, 1... Two, three, twenty. No, it's not not quite it, but okay. So we're gonna go like this, like this, and then we're just obviously. I mean, I don't know why I'm even thinking. I am ignoring his acolytes, and we're just hitting him straight in the face. This is really. There's really nothing to think about in terms of that. You know, bring him down to two health. At the charge of the commander, if he clears our board right now, we have the charge of the commander still. Okay, there's a frost nova, so that did not do it for him. It did not save him. Attacking into our taunters to get some card draw. Let's see if he's got his, um... Let's see if he's got an ice block to play. We have the four just from the Perdition's Blade, so he needs to at the very least freeze me. I mean, it's over because we have Argent Commander, but if he ice blocks, or I guess an ice barrier would delay. Well, actually, that'd be eight, so he'd be down to two. Hmm. And I think he is doing the math or just delaying the inevitable, knowing that this four weapon attack is coming. I'm going to go with that ladder. I, 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 I'm pretty sure he's just delaying the inevitable. So what happens is when you go on tilt and you know you're going to lose anyways, sometimes you just decide to AFK from your computer and prolong the process for your opponent. I don't say that for any particular reason, because uh, I do it too. So this is a, this, uh, you know. All right, that's game number two. Let's go ahead and move on to a third and final match. And our last game for today will be against a druid. Uh, obviously, you know, I like these damage dealers and stuff, but I, I am, I, I want some minions here. I want to, I want to get some of my early to mid game minions out. We do have the Argent Squire there. And the Backstab and Eviscerate, both of those uh, cards, Devil Backstab, that's going to help us deal with any potential early game. Early game minions he may throw down, uh, although we prefer to use the eviscerate as a uh, to the face extra damage so all right well good start for us here and nothing from the opponent yet We're gonna hit him a couple times now he did hold on to his coin and opted not to attack into the Argent squire i wonder if it's because he's going for some special three drop or he just realized well that'd be a waste of a coin and then that thing would just be at one all right so he's going to shape shift he'll be attacking into my minion now dropping the shield Next turn, we've got a Harvest Golem in play. We're going to hit him for two. Oh, or Fairy Dragon. Yeah, 
fairy dragon can't be targeted. He could harvest golem the wrath. Fight. He could wrath. <laughs> he could harvest golem the wrath. He could wrath the harvest golem. Fairy dragon he cannot target. Fairy dragon good against target. Opponents that can target, so good against mage. Oh no, he can do mass damage though. He's gonna coin for one damage across the board. And with his second mana, he's then going to play another spell. Sort of, yeah, there it is. Power of the Wild, gonna give it a 3-2 in play. That's gonna do that second damage across the board. And now he's got the 3-2, which I cannot backstab, so I'm gonna have to attack into it. Well played, sir. And this also delays me from playing my Harvest Golem. I can't backstab it because it's been damaged, so that is pretty much my play. Delaying the Harvest Golem pretty, pretty big. Now, I did get him to pop his Pyromancer combo and get rid of a Power of the Wild. And uh, this deck has so much mid-game. Okay, so that thing's dead. And we will get a Harvest Golem in play. So do I take the damage, do I take the extra damage to the face? Or do I just backstab it? It'd be, two, it'd be two extra damage. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's let's just backstab it. Uh, now I'm actually not even sure. After just having done that decision, I'm not sure because I've got a blood mage in the hand, so that could have been pretty big having two three damage backstabs. But he is pretty much only dropping about one creature a turn, anyways. And you can't use two backstabs on the same creature for obvious reasons, so I guess I guess it's okay. Where shall I okay, so we are set to deal with that, luckily, without too much of a loss here. Um, in fact, can I go? Let's see, two, four. No, it's five, six, seven. Uh, let's see. We could do two with that. And then just four, and we don't even need the uh, blood so mage. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Why don't we do that? Actually, not gonna end up. Not gonna use the blood mage. So we're gonna two comboed perdition blade, two damage, and then four. So we didn't need the blood mage for the extra spell power there. We will still get rid of it, and now we can hit him in the face. Here we go. And Here we go. I think I'm gonna actually. Yeah, we'll use up a durability. We will use up a durability. I don't want to sit on this too long. Six, six Swampoos is scare that living bejesus out of me. Or slimes or whatever. It's too, too much Magic the Gathering crossing into my Hearthstone and vice versa. Depending on who you ask. Alright, so he's going to wrath that to get the card draw. And then I'm guessing he's getting rid of it. Uh, assuming that I may have a... Oh, it's a Moonfire? Interesting. Uh, get rid of it assuming that I might have a Defender of Argus, which this deck does this deck does certainly run, so. And he's actually going to Claw and Shapeshift to get rid of the first iteration of my Harvest Golem. We will still get that 2-1 returned. 2 damage to him, bring him down to uh, 23 health. And I I'm just going to actually throw him in play. We are actually just going to throw him in play. A lot of times I want to save him for later on, just for that surprise four damage, but you know what? Getting him down to 15 and now having him have to deal with a 4-2 with Divine Shield. That works too. So all sorts of options that he could have. All he needs to do is drop the shield, get two damage. He's gonna innervate, bring him up to nine. Is he, uh, ooh, Sonarius. Getting himself some taunters in play. Very good. Now we do have. Well, actually, we have a multitude of answers for this here. None. Gonna go like that. We are going to. Go, I could kill Sonarius. I'm also thinking of just ignoring him. So we could go one, two, three. That would be four, five, six, seven. Yeah. You know what? Let's just go for space, actually. We have him so close right now. I'm gonna bring him down to eight. Okay. So now he's down to eight. If he attacks into this, we still have four, five, six, seven damage available to us. 
and then we would just need to push through one more. Or probably two, because he's probably going to shapeshift. So there's a taunt, and here's a heal. Okay. Now wishing that I just killed Tenarius. Because now he's got a free kill for my 4-5. Oh, he drops the shield? What do you got? A uh, claw? Okay. Alright. Let's see here. Let's see the top deck. It is a deadly poison. Well, that does help. So that's gonna be three damage. We got three, four, five. Okay, so we can clear his board right now. So I think that's, I think that's what we're just best suited doing at this point. And do I drop that for the card draw? Nah, save that in case we get an eviscerate. Get that extra damage. Take advantage of the spell power. There's a Sarah. That is probably the game. He's at 14. He's got a Sarah in play. We're at 21. This does not seem like a very good situation for us. Does not seem like a very likely win. So we know this dies at the at the very least to a weapon attack. He could have an Acera Awakens. He could have gotten that uh, for his dream card at the end of his turn, which would clear our board. Plus hit us five in the face. What is he hitting me with? Hitting me with a swipe, all right. So there goes our, get a blade flurry. Hits us for four, then swipes me again. Bringing me down to nine, shape shifts me. He's up to 12, we are down to eight. And yeah, it's pretty much impossible at this point. I do not see what we could possibly get. I'm gonna shiv him for one. Draw a card. Another shiv, all right. Shiv him for one again. Draw a card. It's an SI7 agent, all right. Yeah, this guy's too tough. damage to him. Here we Hit him go. in the face, bring him down to seven. Weapon back up, pass the turn. We're down to eight though. He's got four plus a shapeshift, five damage, so he only needs to push through three more damage. That is not it. Does he have taunters? He's gonna savage roar. That's the that's the damage. Okay, so he didn't have to play that extra stuff he just did. Okay, all right. Well, that's it. That's the game, and that'll do it. All right. So we ended up going two and one, uh, losing this last game here in style. <laughs> But yeah, uh, overall the deck seems like it's doing okay on the ladder. Uh, maybe it's just the ranking. Maybe it's me. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's going to do it here. Again, we're going to be trying to make an effort to get back up to rank 5 this season. So stay tuned. I'll be doing a couple more uh, ladder climbs uh, before we move back into deck spotlights. And then we'll just be taking it from there. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe, keep watching, and keep owning.